Hi, I'm Alan Day, CEO and founder of State of Flux, and welcome to The Power of Three, a video series when we interview leading chief procurement officers and executives about three things that have influenced their careers. From books to bosses, from music to movies, we explore the three things that have shaped their success. Join us as we learn from the best of the business here on The Power of Three. Hi everyone, I'm Alan Day from State of Flux and I'm lucky to have Joseph Martinez, um, SIG 2019 Supernova Hall of Fame uh, uh, reciprocant. Uh, and um, I've known jo Joseph for a long time now, so I'm, I'm incredibly excited about this discussion. Um, so Joseph, over to you. I'm going to get you to introduce yourself and if you could mention three roles that you've had throughout your career and what, what are the three things that you'd like to be known for? Uh, absolutely. Thank you for inviting me on, to, on, Alan. I really appreciate that. When I think back at the roles, I can think about them from a c couple of different lenses. And the first one is, is that I was in the U.S. Army for eight years and I, I was actually a, an Apache, an AH-64 Apache pilot. So that's one of the roles that I, I'm known for and something that I'm proud of. Uh, I also was a consultant uh, early in my career. I worked for PricewaterhouseCoopers, uh, and in that capacity, I was actually a strategy consulting consultant, and then we developed what we called full-value procurement. So I'm very pleased that I was one of the folks that actually helped to work to create the methodology and then go out and actually sell this into the market. Uh, and another role that, I'm, that I've been very pleased with is the fact that I've been a chief procurement officer uh, at major financial services uh, companies across the globe uh, over the past 25 plus years. And so I'm very, very pleased that I've had the faith of my uh, particular uh, bosses as well as my um, companies to, to give, make me the chief procurement officer. Thanks, Joseph. Uh and I was curious because I know we're both farmers' sons, yes. so I wondered whether um, there was going to be a role you mentioned about on the farm. But um, I know probably if I look at three roles I've had, I'm not sure the farm role would have would have made the list. But uh, just wondering whether it made made your consideration or your list. As well. I did consider. I did consider that, as you know, I've I've. Um you know, grew up on a ranch. And so I'm really like you, um, well versed in livestock and in farming, etc. Uh, and I always, uh, I always kind of laugh because there's a picture that I that I tend to show people that shows, you know, at least we forget where we came from. This is my high school. This is my high school senior yearbook photo. And you can probably notice the cowboy hat on it. And so I, I keep that because it reminds me of where I came from and what I don't want to be doing. <laughs> that is not, that is not something that, that, you know, while I enjoy it and it's something to do as a hobby, I don't want to do that for a living. So, so th thank you for bringing that up. I hear you. Oh. <laughs> no, no, my pleasure. Um, and I, I suppose that, that segues us nicely into three things that you would like to be known for um, uh, from those roles over the time. Well, when I think about it from a professional perspective, right, you know, I'm, a, a lot of people, and I want to be known for being very versatile, right? I'm, I'm one of those, those individuals that really has strived to be very versatile, and I have, you know, have a very broad skill set, and, and I, I, you know, I, I want to be able to, to have flexibility and adaptability in terms of what I've been able to do. And so, you know, that's one of the things. Also, I am somebody who wants to be known as being a strong mentor. I have mentored people across uh, my career. And I'm, I'm actually pleased to tell you that there are over a dozen people that have worked for me that are now either heads of strategic sourcing or our chief procurement officers. And so I feel very pleased that, you know, through my mentorship and through my leadership, I've been able to, to help to drive that. And then I also want to be remembered and known as a strong change agent, right? Because for me, that is really something that I've always done. I'm the guy who's always come into situations where I have to turn around supply chains and, and reinvent them. And so it's an area that, that I want to be remembered for because I've done a, a tremendous amount of, um, of change in my, in my uh, career. And, you know, I, I, I feel like I'm somebody who's really good at building uh, collaboration and, and building strong relationships, both with internal clients, stakeholders, and suppliers. 
but 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 I'm so, I'm one of those guys who's always out there trying to kind of make things more uh, practical and more efficient and effective. Thanks, and and I know um, not to throw you completely in it, but I know prior to 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 our call we were chatting mm-hmm. about some of the things um, on a personal level that you'd like to be remembered for, um, um, and, a- a- um, and absolutely. Got, uh, yeah, so so um, you yeah. know, again, since I was five years old, I have been a painter, an oil painter, right? And so, you know, I want to be known for my ability to capture the essence of a scene, you know, kind of bringing it forth, and, and you know, hopefully creating emotions for people that are looking at my work. And and you know, I really want to kind of use color and texture and composition to really reflect reflect the beauty around the world that I see right through my lens that I'm trying to get people to actually see what I feel and what I'm thinking. But, but I also want to kind of make sure that they're getting a a view of the stories of my life and kind of the underlying emotions that that, that are within the work that I'm putting. So, so I I really try to create, you know, uh, oil paintings and, and, and uh, I've tried to kind of push the boundaries of of surrealism in some instances and other instances uh, really trying to be, you know, more classic in terms of what I'm doing. Additionally to that, I'm an excellent photographer, okay? And and I say that because some of my work, uh, both paintings as well as photography, are in the White House collection, right? So, so I strive to capture images that are, you know, really not just capturing the moment that's happening, but also trying to tell a story, right? So, so I want people to, who look at my work to really kind of see, you know, what, what I'm looking through, through, through my lens, and then how, how do they actually explore uh, and and understand that for for me there's a real important balance between light, shadow, and color, right? And so I want to make sure that when I'm taking a, a photo that it's really being very unique in terms of the subjects that I'm looking at, and and it's really about the celebration of life of any kind of life, right? And so so it, it's an area that, I, that that I'm pretty proud with, and you know you, you've seen some of my work. I have some of it here that uh, that, that that's really you know what I'm trying yeah, to do is I'm trying amazing. to invoke invoke memories and emotions in people to be better but it's interesting actually because you 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 talk about in your art capturing Mm -hmm. capturing and taking people with you basically on Mm -hmm. what you see which which in the essence is is kind of what you're trying to do as a change agent uh in your in in your daily business life as well really is is Mm -hmm. is kind of take people with you as you go through um, and and sort of show them the, your vision. So, so uh, there is there is some parallels there. I think um, I don't know if you yeah. if you find yeah, that. I re- but, uh, yeah, I, I really agree with you on that because you know I'm committed to making a meaningful impact on the world around me, whether it's through art or whether it's through my profession, which is supply chain and procurement, right? And, and so I, I try and use my influence and my skills to create you know a positive change, you know. And again, whether it's in my art whether it's oil painting, whether it's photography, or in my professional life, right? Because I believe that that it's really important that you create a collaborative uh, environment. And then, you know, the strength of diverse perspectives are really critically important to me. And I, I seek out opportunities to inspire and help others, right? Through my actions and through the initiatives that I'm leading. And But, but you know, at the bottom line, I aim to be a catalyst, right? Because I'm trying to help mm. to progress the profession but I'm also very, very uh, succinctly thinking about what am I doing that's going to impact the earnings per share for the company and the shareholders that I'm, that, that I'm working on behalf. So it's kind of a balancing act, but I think one help, one side helps to to balance the other. I agree. I agree. So um, in 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 true spirit of the power of three, and and as you know, this this has really come from something that. We do at State of Flux where we look at three things that have gone well and three things that could be improved on on every opportunity. And what, what we find is it's kind of the third one that people have to think about. You know, they can normally give you one or two off the top of your head. Yeah. Um, and, and it's the third one. So I'm not going to let you get away with two as we go through this. You're going to have to give me three. But but I will um, I will kind of start to ask you some of the influences throughout your your career um mm-hmm. and and starting with that let's 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 look at three books that you found inspiring interesting 
throughout throughout mm-hmm. my career. Well, I think one of them was early on, um, you know, uh, there's a book there called The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. And I've actually had the opportunity to meet him in person several times. And, you know, I really think that that book is really uh, impactful in my life and my career because it's offering timeless principles, you know, for, for both personal and professional growth and success. And I found it extremely helpful in my career. I've actually given that book to many people who have worked for me because I, I think that it that it's powerful. I think when I think about a second book, you know, um, you know, there's there's a book that it's a little newer. It was written back in 2011. It's called The Lean Startup. Okay, and you know, th- this book is by by uh, Eric Eyes, and you know. I like this book because of its approach to business development, you know, which which is really kind of emphasizing the rapid, you know, iteration, experimentation, you know, getting customer feedback uh, so you can develop successful, you know, products or services. And even though I'm on the service side of that relative to what I'm doing from the supply chain perspective, I think that a lot of the uh, concepts that he introduced were just really important. And one of those is called the minimal viable product, right, or the MVP. We see that kind of permeating now. This is actually the guy who came up with it and, you know, talked about a lot of lean principles. You know, I'm I'm a big Edward Demings fan, and he used to say that which is valued is measured, that which is measured gets done, right? Well, you know, what Eric was trying to do is he was trying to get people to actually think through, you know, um, on how they were actually going to improve in their in their stuff. And he was talking about startup sectors, right, to drive innovation and growth. But, you know, I've tried to take these principles and adapt them into procurement and into financial services because I think that, that, that that's been a really impactful, impactful book upon my my um, career. And it, it's a, it's one that, again, I share with with a lot of people. And I guess when I, when I think about that third book, right, it's, it's a little bit older, but, you know, there, there's a book called Good to Great, you know, why some companies uh, make the leap and others don't, yes. right? That's by, by Jim Collins. And and I like that because, you know, this book is giving us kind of insights. And, and, you know, again, in many leadership seminars that you go to, this is the one that they're going to talk about. So, right. But, you know, when you start thinking about the characteristics that are essential for companies to make the transition from good to great, you know, there's a lot of things that people just don't think about that I think he, he really took the time and he very succinctly and cogently presented them, right? When he talked about level five leadership, when he talked about, you know, first who, then what, right? And, and I think that that uh, first two, then what is critically important, right? Because what you got to do is you got to make sure that you're prioritizing getting the right people onto the organization that you have as you're starting to decide where you're going to take that organization. So you got to really focus on the people, focus on the right roles, and then you got to get rid of the people and make the hard decisions as to who needs to leave the team. You know, and, and I think about it in terms of kind of like being in a rowboat, right? Who's going to be in the boat? Who's going to be out of the boat? You know, when you think about, you know, a culture of discipline, right, you know, I think that it's really important that people understand that what we're doing is going through a very disciplined action. And what we're doing is we're combining kind of the entrepreneurial spirit spirit that we have with a rigorous focus on our company's uh, objectives and goals, right? So, you know, anybody who, who's worked for me and you can ask them, I'm, uh, you know, a fiend for discipline, I'm a fiend for goals and measuring for what we're doing, a lot of that comes back to, you know, how, how do we actually want to have the, and live the characteristics that are going to help us get from a good to great perspective, right? And then, you know, uh, one of the things that, you know, it's probably not as popular, but people talk about a flywheel and a doom loop, right? And so, you know, good good transformations, uh, you know, they don't happen overnight. It's a journey, right? And that's one of the things that you have to sell executive management and you have to t- sell the team and even your clients on that, you know, you're going to have a journey that you're going to go through. And and I like to talk about, you know, he talks about it in terms of, you know, uh, a heavy flywheel that's building momentum over time, uh, as opposed to companies yes, that are yes. chasing short term success. I think about it as the Oregon Trail and going through, uh, you know, the desert from one side of the country to the other for, for Americans, right? Because I think that it's really important that we understand who is going to really be working with us and how we're actually going to drive that. So, so you know that that that's another area that you know those are three books I think that I've taken portions of them and melded them into the outcome that I'm trying to go. And you know, think about it kind of like a Rubik's cube, right? Which is you know something that I'm also known for. So, excellent. Well, I, and I. I, I 
at a certain point, I, I, we might circle back on Deming as as a fellow, Dem, uh, you know, Edwards Deming fan. Um, yep. Uh, I, I think there's huge principles and equally principles in the books you've mentioned that kind of come yep. through from Deming, whether whether it's explicit or not. Um, mm. So yeah, we can, we can touch on that. But I, I, yeah, mm. as a, as a fellow fan, I, I picked up on on that. So let let's switch it up a bit because um, we you know we know we know a bit about your career and 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 kind of the the awards you've got mm. there. But um, I'm quite interested in just. Um, Joseph is a person. So, so three movies that you that you enjoy or or have inspired you throughout. I'm, I'm really curious about about this, just just on a kind of more personal level. Yeah. So they're probably not going to be movies that a lot of people <laughs> would be their favorite, but you know, I'm I'm a little different. Um, you know, the the movie, The Pursuit of Happiness, right? I like that movie because it's really kind of showing the, the, the power of resilience and determination and overcoming personal and professional challenges. And for, for me, that really resonates with me because on, on a personal level, I, I'm somebody who's overcome a lot of challenges. I'm dyslexic. And, you know, I was able to overcome that. And you, you can't, you always will be dyslexic, but I learned how to actually use strategies in order to be more effective in what I'm doing. Uh, there's another one that I really like. It's one of my favorite movies. It's called The Dead Poet Society. And, and that's really, you know, um, a great movie because it's highlighting the importance of creativity, self-expression, you know, kind of challenging the, sta the status quo. And it's something that I've tried to do in my entire career. And I've tried to do that in terms of what, what I'm doing in, in, in what I do from a supply chain and an operations perspective. And then what I've done in my personal life in terms of, of my art. And so it, it's something that's very inspiring to me. And, and a third one, I think, um, is Hidden Figures, okay? It's, um, for those of you that don't know that movie, it's, it's a movie about three African-American women who played, you know, a very you know, pivotal role in the early days of the U.S. space program, right? And so it's really inspiring because it's showing people breaking barriers, it's showing people making a difference on something that actually is, was, you know, changed, changed the world, right? And so, you know, as a Latino person uh, and as a veteran, you know, this really re resonated with me, right? Okay. And when you think about it, you know, yeah. I've been in the field of supply chain. I'm one of the first Latino and veteran chief procurement officers in financial services. So I was really inspired when I, by, by that movie, Hidden Figures, because it really kind of helped me to kind of think through how do I actually make a difference and help to kind of pay it forward for others. So those are three of my favorite movies. If I could sneak a fourth one in, it would probably be Casablanca. But we, we can talk about that later. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. Yeah, great, great films. And, yeah, <laughs> inspiring. Um, and so throughout your career, uh, mm -hmm. you know, do three bosses stand out that have kind of helped, helped mm -hmm. and guided you? Because you've talked a lot about your style to mentorship and leadership. Mm -hmm. But clearly, you know, we often reflect those that have influenced us. So I'm, 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 I'm curious to, to kind of get your take on three bosses that you've had that have helped shape your career. Absolutely. I'm, I'm going to talk about three, uh, three gentlemen that have been just inspirational in my career uh, and people that I just think the world of, okay? Uh, one of my first bosses uh, when I was... After I left the, the military and I was working in procurement when I first started out, I worked for a gentleman by the name of Don Zabak. And he was the chief financial officer for a newspaper chain that I used to work at. And, you know, he was probably the person that, you know, that taught me, you know, how important it was not just to value the individuals, but to really create a, a methodology that was consistent and repeatable. And I, I really, I learned a lot from Don. Um, he's, he's somebody who, who I have a lot of time for. And uh, he actually, I think, really was very foundational in helping to set the way I was actually going to go from a trajectory perspective. Uh, another another uh, gentleman who uh, I actually speak to this guy, you know, a couple of times a month, if not more, is a guy named Joseph Yakura. And Joe Yakura, uh, you used to be my boss. He was the chief procurement officer at um, American Express when I worked at American Express. And he took a chance on me and he actually promoted me. He was the first guy who gave me a, a, a regional director 
capability. And what he did was he uh, he allowed me to. I had come up doing um, hardware and software for both a mid-range and mainframe, and so I was a tech sourcing guy, right? And he he said, you know what? We'd like to go out in South America and Latin America and the Caribbean, and we'd like to actually centralize and actually bring that part of the franchise into the global procurement organization. And you know, he, he took a lot of time to 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 mentor with me and and to to really kind of help me kind of develop as a person as to how you actually work with senior executives. Because I had to go work with not just the CEOs of each of the markets, but with their executive committees and get them to willingly, without a mandate, to willingly turn over the procurement and, and operations to my group. And we set that up. And that, that really set me in. It broadened my horizons because I worked in South America, in Argentina, Brazil, you know, Chile, all the way up through Mexico and, and the Caribbean. And that kind of gave me that flavor for actually working very broadly. And I learned a tremendous amount from this gentleman. Uh, and, uh, you know, he was, he was somebody who really really inspired me and then uh, another person that really uh, kind of inspired me from from, from um, uh, you know who's one of my bosses was uh, a gentleman who uh, his name is Ken Litton and Ken Litton um, he works he's the chief operating officer for one of the businesses over at JP Morgan Chase and I really learned a lot from him. So, so he hired me, and he actually uh, expatted me to to Asia Pacific. And so I got to run Asia Pacific for everything, you know, everything in the supply chain, from from sourcing to category management to accounts payable to to actually uh, the call centers uh, that that we had associated with what we were trying to do. Uh, across across Asia, and so I moved to Singapore, and I lived there for for five plus years, and I worked everywhere from India, China, all the way down through uh, Oceania, down in Australia, and New Zealand, and and so that really gave me an opportunity to grow. And the fact that he would kind of his his leadership style was to kind of mentor you, and then let you go, and then give you some guidance. He wasn't he wasn't he wasn't one of those guys that was in your face at all times. He was giving you the latitude to be creative and to actually change and what I liked. He told me one time, um, Joseph, you're kind of like that guy who's, who's the tinker in the garage, always working on something. He said, I want you to take that and, uh, and create these things. And so myself and, and another peer, that's when we got into what was called third party risk management. And we actually set that up and then migrated that over globally. So we started that out in, in Singapore. Uh, myself and a guy named Nate Bedrosian, uh, because we had somebody like Ken that was willing to kind of invest in us, willing to allow us to go out there and, and kind of push the boundaries. So those three gentlemen were extremely, extremely um, crucial in my foundationally that ultimately allowed me to become a chief procurement officer. Thank you. And I'm smiling because that's how we met is via Ken. Uh, yes. And uh, with Nate as well. So uh, when you were in Singapore, which is, which is interesting times and bringing back some good memories, there. So thank you for that. And throughout your career, um, have there been sort of three quotes um, that you find found kind mm -hmm. of inspiring or helped you in terms of your direction? Are there, are there yes, three yes. Things that that kind of spring to mind in terms of quotes. There, there are one of them that kind of springs to mind is from from an, an American that we lent to the British, a guy by the name of Winston Churchill, whose mother was American, so therefore, technically he was American. Uh, success is not final, failure is not fatal. Uh, it is the courage to continue that counts, and that has really inspired me my entire life. My grandfather is the one that taught me that expression, that that quote. And it's something that I just really embraced and have embraced, you know, again, you know, success is not final, failure is not fatal, uh, and it is the courage to continue that counts. So to me, that is, that, that is kind of the ethos that, that I drive. And you probably see over here, I have a picture on my desk always of Albert Einstein, okay? And <laughs> Albert Einstein, uh, there's a great quote from him where he says, in the middle of difficulty lies opportunity. 
And I've always been an optimist and I've always taken that to heart. It's really resonated with me, right? So so that that's a quote that that, that that means a tremendous amount to me. And then, you know, later in my in my life, the, the, you know, the, there's a great quote from Steve Jobs that says, the only way to do great work is to love what you do. And I absolutely love what I do, whether I'm painting, taking pictures, or whether I'm driving a supply chain transformation. So those quotes really resonate with me. And, and it, it means a tremendous amount to me to, to kind of use those, um, you know, I don't know if you remember this when you would come visit me in Singapore. I would always have the quote of the day that I would put on on the conference room uh, whiteboard, and so I, I'm 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 somebody who you know has an abundance of of quotes, and there were a couple of them that didn't quite make it, so I snuck one in earlier uh, <laughs> into the conversation, uh, and uh, and uh, you know so that's really kind kind of a bit about what I think about from a quote perspective. Excellent. Excellent, and um, and uh, you know, I know, I uh, knowing you, I know you kind of you like both the arts and and the science, both in mm -hmm. in work and personal life. So so, uh, let's get some insight into kind of three pieces of music that um, <laughs> that that inspire you or or relax you. Okay. Um, uh, yeah. Well. There's, there's a, while well, I have a huge taste for music, um, you know, a couple of tracks that kind of come to mind is, you know, um, there's, there's a song called Eye of the Tiger by Survivor, and, you know, and that, that song is just really yeah. powerful and motivating, and it's, and, you know, I'm, I'm a big Rocky movie fan, so I really like that, and recently my wife was actually out in Philadelphia, and she was running up the stairs, uh, you know, to the, the way Rocky did, and, you know, Eye of the Tiger has you know, been one of those songs that we, we just absolutely love. You know, again, we're, we're from the 70s and 80s, right? So uh, another one, again, kind of going back into the roller deck, so to speak, is Don't Stop Believing by Journey, okay? This is a classic yeah. rock anthem, yeah. you know, that, that, that really uh, tells us to hold on to our dreams, right? And, it, and this has inspired me across my entire career because, you know, as you know, in every career, you kind of have ups and downs. But if you don't stop believing, you know, you're, you're going to get there. And then, um, you know, believe it or not, I actually have a rap song that, 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 I, that I really like and I find inspiring. And it's, it, it's, it's called Lose Yourself by Eminem. And, you know, it's really kind of yeah. teaching you the importance of seizing opportunities and giving one's best effort to all the challenges and situations that you're encountering. And, you know... If you're a professional in procurement and supply chain, you're going to have many challenging situations. So, so you know that that's another one of those great songs that that that, that, are, that really inspires that's, me. Um, I have to say that that song has come up uh, in one of my other discussions, and um, so it's clearly Eminem has clearly resonated in, in, with CPOs um, across the globe. <laughs> um, which, standing back, I'm not sure you would you would uh, paint. Uh, m and m and cpos but maybe there's a challenge for for someone to try and interview m and m about how he's inspiring cpos around the world um, <laughs> awesome thank you um really cool and so so hopefully that's given uh, certainly our listeners some insight into into just i i i like to kind of put a bit of what we do in, in state of flux around the three things that we've done well and three things you can improve mm -hmm. um and then we'll wrap up with three pieces of advice. So, okay. so when you stand back and look at your amazing career to date, what are the three things that you think you've done well, and, and three things that you you could have improved over over time? Well, I think I think I've been a, a really good at procurement and supply chain transformations, right? And and I've I've yeah. I've been able to do those foundationally on a repetitive basis. On, at global scale. So I think that, you know, really being a, um, a strong um, procurement thought leader in terms of, of, uh, of procurement and supply chain, that that's one of the things where I, I think I've done very well. Uh, again, the multiple transformations that I've done, I think, have been well received and have, have actually transformed for the better. And, and actually, in, in, in some instances, been recognized by the CFOs when they're actually doing their quarterly calls with the financial analysts. So, so I, I think, you know, 
uh, be, being a thought leader, I've, I've, I've uh, helped to uh, create the CPSM exam that ISM has. I've helped to write uh, some certifications for the sourcing industry group. So, uh, you know, I think that, you know, I've, I've contributed to, um, to the profession, right? Uh, I also think uh, one of the things that, that hopefully I've done well and that I'm proud of, okay, is, and this is not professional, this is personal, I have three sons. And I think that I've been a great father to them and have helped them actually thrive. And, you know, two of my sons actually work for, for some of the big consulting firms. So I'm, I'm very proud of, of the fact that I have a very close relationship with my sons. Uh, and, you know, we do a lot of things together. So so I think that's important. But but I think also one of the areas that, that, that I did really well was, was I think I did really well in, in the military and in giving back to my yes. country. So, so those are probably three areas that, that, that I think that I've done very well, you know, the transformations, the leadership and thought leadership, yeah. and then being a father and obviously, obviously being a veteran. Yeah. Excellent. Now, when, and, when and it comes to... if, if we look at, yeah, improving, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I was going to go there. I was going to say one of them is, is, uh, Good man. I think areas that I, you know, to improve is sometimes my interactions with others. I, I've 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 had to kind of think about that and say, hey, look, you know, we come from different points of origin in different cultures, okay? And I think, you know, those interactions are, are just really uh, really important. And so for me, that's an area that I'm always trying to improve is my my social interactions with others. I think uh, another area that that I'm I've, I'm always trying to improve is my personal technological capabilities, right? So um, I'm somebody who's very interested in data, and so I've gone out there and I've I've tried to learn how to use Power BI or or Tableau or Sysense, and um, you know I'm, I actually sit on the board of a data and analytics company uh, who is kind of revolutionizing that with AI and ML. And, um, you know, so, so that's an area that I'm constantly trying to improve myself on because, you know, I'm kind of a little bit of a tech geek, right? And I, I think maybe the, yeah. th the, third, the third interaction that, um, that, I, that I'd like to improve is, you know, in some instances, I've not always had the best relationships with some of the executives that I've worked with. It's because I tend to sometimes be a bit tenacious in terms of driving forward what I think is the right approach. And in some instances, others may have a different point of view. So working with them collaboratively uh, is, is, I think, um, an, an area that I, I always am trying to kind of improve. And, uh, you know, I was, I've was i been a Boy Scout leader for, you know, several decades. And so you learn that you have to have a different style and the interactions that you have as you're trying to develop those young gentlemen um, through that process. So those are areas that, that, you know, that I try and improve myself as a human being. Thanks, Joseph. Really interesting. And I suppose just to kind of um, wrap things up, what, 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 you know, you've clearly had a, a long and successful career. Um, for those people that are kind of mid-career or even just starting out, what, what, what are three pieces of advice that you would give them as they, as they go through their journey from what number you've one, uh, Number years? one, always be true to yourself. You have to be true to yourself because at the end of the day, you have to live in your head and you have to be able to live with what you've done. And so I think if you're trying to be something that you are not in order to be successful, it's not going to work. So you have to be true to yourselves, as I think would be one, you know, one of the critical um, advice that, that I would give. I would also say something that a second one, which is that, you know, you need to be transparent in your interactions. I believe that transparency modifies all behavior. Okay, and so uh, you need to be very, very transparent and above board in, in whatever the in, in interactions you're having, whether it's with a supplier, whether it's with an executive, whether it's with your team, whether it's with a colleague or a peer, you need you need, you need to be transparent in what you're doing because it just makes it easier to to, to get along and, 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 to, and to move things. And I think the, th the third part of advice that I would really offer is really embrace change, really embrace the newness of technologies, but understand that 
technology is an enabler. It is not the end state. So, you know, so think about as you're going through your career, try and look for new and innovative solutions that may make things better for your profession and for what you're doing personally. So, so be curious, have that intellectual curiosity and always be trying to kind of learn and listen to others because they're going to help you become better. So, you know, that intellectual curiosity is, I think, the third piece of advice that I would say to folks. I, I love that. Yeah, we talk, we talk about being unreasonably curious. Um, so, uh, yeah, I love that in terms of just keep, keep being curious. Um, huge thank you for today, Joseph. As always, I, I love talking to you and um, find, find our discussions inspiring. So I'm sure listeners will have uh, found that as well. So um, hugely appreciated. And um, yeah, I'll look forward to, to chatting more uh, um, on a personal level as, as, as we continue. But um, I'm sure people will reach out in the back of this as well. Thank you. Thank you, Alan, for inviting me and have a great day.